can tell you at the outset, we have, all of us have the utmost respect for Mr. Musk and obviously respect and admiration for our president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump. The long-awaited moment is finally here. Boeing's Starliner astronauts are preparing to return home alongside SpaceX's Crew-9. This will be the end of their saga spanning nine months. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. In the early hours of March 16th, at precisely 1.35 a.m. Eastern Time, the hatch of SpaceX Endurance swung open, marking a historic moment as Crew-10 finally entered the International Space Station, ISS. The awaiting expedition's 72 crew members greeted them with excitement. But this was more than just another docking. It was another testament to SpaceX's continued success in ferrying astronauts to the ISS under NASA's commercial crew program. Following a 28-hour orbital chase after launching aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 on March 14, four astronauts safely arrived at their destination. The crew, Americans Ann McLean and Nickel Ayers, Japan's Takuya Onishi, and Russian cosmonaut Kirill Peskov, blasted off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 7.03 p.m. ET, embarking on this crucial mission. While Crew-10's arrival is significant, the upcoming return of Crew-9 is drawing even more attention. Their journey back to Earth, now set for Tuesday, March 18, has been accelerated due to favorable conditions. The Dragon spacecraft hatch closure will begin at 10.45 p.m. EDT on Monday, March 17, with splashdown expected at 5.57 p.m. on March 18. The timing ensures the ISS crew can wrap up essential handover duties before harsher weather conditions later in the week. For two astronauts, this return means far more than just another completed mission. It marks the end of an unexpected nine-month ordeal in space. Originally scheduled for just eight days, astronauts Barry Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams found themselves stuck aboard the ISS due to repeated technical delays. Their prolonged stay wasn't just an inconvenience. It became a serious test of physical and mental endurance. The weight of the situation is clear in their voices, as seen in a video pinned on Elon Musk's X account. We're coming back before long, so, you know, don't do, make all those plans without me. <laughs> you know, we'll be back before too long. I can tell you at the outset, we have, all of us have the utmost respect for Mr. Musk and obviously respect and admiration for our president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump. It's easy to understand their relief. Spending over nine months in microgravity is not just uncomfortable. It's physically and mentally taxing. The body undergoes significant changes including muscle deterioration and bone density loss, and concerns about their health have grown. One of the most alarming moments came last December, when a photo of Sunita Williams looking worryingly thin went viral. Though she tried to downplay concerns, many online remained skeptical. Comments on Ekan reflected growing unease. Suni Williams does not look well. She needs to come home now. They look like they're in very bad shape and need to be evacuated ASAP. NASA doctors have been closely monitoring Williams' condition, with former NASA scientists warning that her biggest challenge lies ahead. Astronauts who are exposed to the space's microgravity for a long time often experience severe physiological challenges, including muscle weakness and loss of bone density, an expert explained. Williams' real challenge will begin when these will worsen after landing. Apart from microgravity's toll, nutrition shortages may have also contributed to Williams' noticeable weight loss. Food on the ISS is designed to be lightweight and have a long shelf life, but this often means a limited diet, which may lack essential nutrients over extended missions. Yet it's not just the physical strain. The psychological toll has been equally intense. Williams has described her prolonged stay as an emotional roller coaster emphasizing the difficulty of being separated from family, friends, and even simple earthly comforts. I can't wait to see my Labrador dogs again, she shared. This wait is more difficult for our family than it is for us. It has been like an emotional roller coaster for them. 
According to Elon Musk, things wouldn't have gone so badly if the Biden administration had allowed SpaceX to bring the astronauts back months ago. That you think that Biden left these astronauts up in space because he didn't want to give you an opportunity to save them, make NASA look bad, make the private sector look better, make you look good. You believe that? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> of course. I, I can't uh, agree. Uh, I mean, I, um, why would he want to let you help them come down when you're supporting the president? No, I mean, the, the, the Biden administration was, was attacking me next level. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Department is of Justice or Injustice under the Biden administration um, was, yeah. I mean, they, they were suing SpaceX. They were, they were suing SpaceX for not hiring asylum seekers. Uh, and we're like, but it's actually illegal for us to hire asylum seekers. Things properly stem from a disaster, namely Boeing Starliner's first crewed mission. Even before launch, technical issues plagued the spacecraft. Despite these glaring problems, NASA still gave it the green light. The spacecraft launched successfully in early June 2024, but soon suffered thruster malfunctions and helium leaks as it approached the ISS. Initially, NASA and Boeing downplayed the risks, insisting Starliner could return the astronauts safely. But as the issues kept piling up, rumors started swirling online about a possible SpaceX Dragon rescue mission. After a series of failed fixes, NASA made a vital decision to extend the stay of astronauts Wilmore and Williams on the ISS until the arrival of SpaceX Crew-9 in early 2025. Now, let's be real here. Why was NASA originally so hell-bent on having this crew return on a Boeing Starliner when they knew damn well the vehicle was bullshit? On the surface, the most obvious explanation is that NASA wanted to protect Boeing's reputation. After all, the company has already faced major failures in recent years. But Elon Musk later suggests something deeper. Politics. Uh, are accelerating the return of the astronauts, uh, which was postponed kind of to a ridiculous degree. They um, got left in space. They, they've been there, they were supposed to be there eight days, they're there almost 300. Biden. They were put, yeah. yes, they were left up there for political reasons, which is not good. Musk's statement set off a firestorm in the space community. Some accused him of spreading misinformation, but he stood his ground. So who's telling the truth? Let's hear from the view of someone familiar with the matter. Uh, I can only say that Mr. Musk, what he says is absolutely factual. I have no, we have no information on that though whatsoever. What was offered, what was, what was not offered, who it was offered to, how that process is went, that's information that we simply don't have. So I, I believe him. Uh, I don't know all those details, and I don't think any of us really can give you a, the answer that maybe that you would be hoping for. The words they've said, pol politics, I mean, that's part of life. He denies that politics played any role in the decision, though. From my standpoint, politics has not played into this at all. As you may know, space should not be political, but in fact, space is inherently political and started that way ever since John F. Kennedy launched the space race between the U.S. and the Soviets. So what do you think? Was this about protecting Boeing? Or did the Biden administration intentionally delay the return for political reasons? Drop your thoughts in the comments. In the depths of a crisis that has spiraled out of control, the Boeing Starliner saga has transformed from a minor setback into a catastrophic nightmare. With each passing day, the problems intensify and Boeing's financial hemorrhage reaches a staggering $2 billion and counting. The company's reputation is plummeting, sending seismic shockwaves through its ranks. Once a beacon of innovation in the dawn of space exploration, Boeing was more than just a company. It was an icon synonymous with boundless ambition and the pursuit of the stars. This golden era saw Boeing play a pivotal role in crafting the very foundation of space travel. From the colossal Saturn V rocket's SIC first stage, which defied gravity with its 7.7 .7 million pounds of thrust, to the lunar orbiters that meticulously mapped the lunar surface, guiding NASA to safe landing sites. The Lunar Roving Vehicle, or Moon Buggy, further extended astronauts' reach etching Boeing's name forever in the fabric of human history. Despite this legacy, Boeing's recent turbulence with the Starliner program 
threatens to tarnish its reputation. The company received a substantial $4.2 billion from NASA for the Commercial Crew Program, dwarfing SpaceX's $2.6 billion contract. However, this wasn't solely due to its legacy. Boeing's influence in Washington and strategic lobbying efforts played a significant role. The company was expected to outpace SpaceX, but instead it finds itself struggling to keep up. Boeing's bold claims, such as sending astronauts to Mars before SpaceX, now seem hollow. The Starliner's woes, including helium leaks and thruster malfunctions, have led to significant delays and financial losses. As Boeing grapples with these challenges, its future in the space race hangs precariously in the balance, overshadowed by SpaceX's success and Elon Musk's relentless drive. The question now is, can Boeing recover from this monumental setback, or will it succumb to the pressures of its own making? In a surprising move, both NASA and Boeing have remained silent on Starliner's future. Will they cancel it? Or are they doubling down on a spacecraft that has already proven to be unreliable? Previously, Boeing insisted it was committed to overcoming the persistent issues that have plagued Starliner. And despite the disastrous mission, Boeing's new CEO has reaffirmed that they're not giving up. The company has pledged to continue working on Starliner, with ongoing efforts to fix the technical failures exposed during previous test flights. But let's be honest, is this really about improving Starliner, or is Boeing just too deep into this mess to back out now? NASA's silence raises even more questions. If the agency truly had confidence in Starliner's future, wouldn't they be defending it? Instead, all we hear is radio silence. NASA is weighing its options for the future of the Starliner program, with a crewed flight still on the table for 2025, if Boeing can overcome its lingering certification hurdles. But doubts are mounting. Some industry insiders suggest that if Boeing fails to make significant progress soon, NASA could rethink its partnership for crewed missions altogether. Meanwhile, a possible cargo flight later this year offers a glimmer of progress, but the bigger question remains. Can Boeing secure Starliner's certification for full-scale astronaut missions, even as last year's crewed test flight remains incomplete? The clock is ticking for Boeing's Starliner. With the ISS set to retire in the early 2030 and SpaceX's fifth Crew Dragon nearing operational status, NASA is already moving to extend its commercial crew partnership with SpaceX through the Crew-14 mission. That raises serious doubts about Starliner's ability to complete all six of its contracted crewed rotation flights and secure its full payout. 